Dear viewers, welcome back to another episode of Editorial Analysis by Drishti IAS. In this segment, we focus on important editorials from major newspapers such as the Hindu, the Indian Express, Live Mint, Business Standard, etc. for effective understanding of students. Now, through this program, we primarily focus on three things. First, we try to link the editorial with that of the UPSC syllabus. Secondly, we try to decode or decipher the key points that are mentioned in the editorial. And lastly, and most importantly, we try to learn what are the key concepts, if any, that are mentioned in the editorial. We truly hope that you love this initiative of the DIAS. Dear viewers, please, please feel free to give us your valuable suggestions so that we can strive to do better each and every day. So with a lot of gratitude to our viewers in our heart, let us commence today's session of Editorial Analysis. Dear viewer, this video is available in Hindi as well. If you wish to watch it, please visit our Hindi YouTube channel, Drishti IAS. For your convenience, the link for this video in Hindi has been provided in the description below. For this episode, we have opted for the editorial titled A Grim Sovereign Tangle uh, from the Hindu, dated September 3rd, 2020. The editorial technically talks about how uh, the GST in future should not fall victim to the trust deficit because of the compensation standoff. Now, uh, let us commence by linking this editorial with that of the UPSC syllabus. It is more important from a mains perspective where we can connect it to general studies 3 uh, with economic development and to further narrow it down we can connect it with government budgeting. So uh, dear viewers the idea behind this editorial is about the recent compensation standoff due to uh, the GST and uh, let us try to understand what are the key points that are mentioned in the editorial. Now uh, you might be aware that since 2016 the GST has been in place so now it's been three years. Uh, after India's new indirect tax regime, that is the GST, was introduced with a slogan of one nation, one tax. Now, in spite of this introduction, the GST regime is still facing an existential crisis. Now, uh, see, first and foremost, let's make it very clear. The GST re regime has uh, many issues, uh, too many rates, complex compliance requirements and multiple changes in rules and tax slabs. Now, despite these issues, the center and states, you know, went ahead jointly to see that the goods and services tax is being implemented all over India. And the best part is this is first time showcased a rare performance of cooperative federalism. Now, uh, however, the, there has been a slowdown in the economy for the last three years and the situation has been worsened because of the COVID-19 lockdowns that has affected. But this has also had an impending effect on the gains and when I talk about gains I'm talking about the cooperative federalism aspect as well that was made over the years between the center and states and rather it has led to more physical tensions all right now before we go ahead to understand what is the uh, tension let us just try to understand the basis of the issue now uh, as you're aware once the GST was implemented the states lost quite a bit of their powers to levy multiple taxes you know as these multiple taxes were all subsumed into the GST Act. Now, uh, it is uh, common sense that, you know, once the states lost their powers, they have also led to shortfalls in the revenue of the states. Now, uh, to understand this concern and initially when the states were raising this issue, the center had promised them, you know, uh, you know, that see, we, are, we understand your concerns and that for five years, you know, we will compensate you for the loss of revenue that you have suffered. Now, uh, keep this basis of the issue in the back of your head as we move to the uh, the compensation standoff. All right. Now, last week, the most controversial 41st GST Council was held. Now, the GST Council uh, consists of the uh, finance minister and the uh, ministers representing the state governments. Usually, they are the state finance ministers. Now, the finance minister. Now, what happened then? So, the finance minister, Mrs. Nirmala Sitharaman, had said that the center, you know, as per their promise, see, they're not backing out from their promise. They simply said, see, we will not be able to meet the compensation shortfall that the states are suffering this year. Now, the states were taken aback. Now, the center estimated, see, that for this year, they will have to pay the states 3 lakh crore for the 
full year. But the center has stated that they only have 65,000 crore in their, uh, you know, compensation purse, which they have to give to the states. So now you see there's a, there is a difference, you know, 3 lakh crore minus 65,000. Now, uh, the center has made it very clear that, you know, that the GST collections have been, it's not because they don't want to give, but the GST collections have been very less and under target. And this has affected the uh, compensation kit, which they have collected for the states. Now, as I mentioned earlier, that is 3 lakh crore, which they're supposed to give. They only have 65,000 crore. Now, the remaining 2 lakh 35,000 crore, the center, you know, went one step ahead and said that see out of this 2 lakh 35000 crore which you know uh, is remaining the center you know has calculated and come to the conclusion that they only owe 97000 crore to the states as compensation for the revenue shortfall they have suffered due to implementation of gst see now understand once again out of the 2 lakh 35000 crore the center has stated that only 97,000 crore is owed by the center to the state, you know, as compensation for the revenue shortfall they have suffered because of GST. Now, what about the remaining 1,38,000 crore? Now, the government has made it very clear that this is not because of, you know, the implementation of GST. Rather, it is due to you know, the extraordinary circumstances, which refers to the pandemic, you know, the COVID-19 uh, pandemic and post it as an act of God. That is, you know, the center did not intentionally do this, but this was titled under as the act of God. Now, this is a, a, a clause they use in law. It's not, you know, uh, technically mean the same, but it kind of, you know, has the same uh, underlying uh, meaning. OK, now. What happened next? Now, the states were taken aback. First and foremost, they were not being compensated. And now, uh, what about the remaining? So, the states, you know, suggested to the center, you know, go ahead, borrow the money from, you know, outside or from the RBI and repay, you know, the states. Because the center has much more powerful leverage on borrowings. Now, the center outrightly rejected this suggestion by the states. And what reasoning did they give? They said that, see, now if the center starts borrowing, you know, higher borrowing by the center will push up interest rates. And in the long run, it will dent or affect India's fiscal parameters, which will be judged by rating agencies such as Moody's, etc. Rather, the center told the states or actually offered the states two options. Now, option one, the center told, see, states can borrow this 97,000 crore. And this borrowing, you know, this borrowing of 97,000 crore, they will not add it to the state's debt. However, the principal and interest can be paid and should be paid through cess collections, which the state can, you know, uh, place on this on their uh, domicile citizens. Now, what about option two? The states can borrow the entire 2,35,000 crore, but again, will have to provide for interest payments by themselves now see the state first and foremost they had an issue that they are they have to be compensated because of revenue shortfall now the center has rejected this idea saying that you know i mean not rejected center has stated that they don't have enough money to uh, give the uh, give the state governments uh, and uh, so the state had suggested you know uh, you borrow the money from the rbi from outside and you know repay uh, or or compensate us however the center said no and the center gave them two options you borrow the money and return it as per in principle and interest end of the day the states were the ones who had to bear or suffer the uh, revenue shortfall now because of this several states you know rejected both the options and did not agree to the center's claim of denting india's physical parameters they still you know stood by you know this fact that let the center borrow why because the state said said that you know rating agencies they don't look at you know just the center's borrowing when they look at total government debt or if they have to look at india's physical parameters they include both center and states and it didn't make a difference if it is the center or the states that borrowed all right. So now this is the key points that are mentioned in the editorial. Now, what should be the possible right course of action? See, now the editorial has stated that, see, if the center does not help the states currently in this situation, it could lead to a trust deficit. Now, this is a big problem. See, now this trust deficit can be a big issue in the future and it could derail future GST reforms. Now, if the if there is this trust deficit, you know that in future or, you know, when things get better and if they have to make reforms in the GST, the states will gang up and go against the center. Why? Because, you know, you broke our trust once. So we would not take up any measure that is going to affect us in the long run. So what does the editorial suggest? The editorial states 
that the center must simply step up and resolve this issue. They should not let a trust deficit be created. Rather, they should, you know, work along with the state government by strengthening the pandemic response and also open up their, you know, uh, purchase and increase government capital spending in order to bolster the demand and spur the economy in order to generate revenue. So with this, we conclude what we have to learn from the editorial. And now we move to the key concept. And most importantly, it is the goods and services tax. Now, you see, the goods and services tax has to go in depth, but we are sticking to what is the most important facts. Now, uh, what is the goods and services tax in India? The GST bill was first introduced in 2014 as the Constitution 122nd Amendment Bill. However, it was renumbered in the statute by the Rajya Sabha as the Constitution 101st Amendment Act of 2016 and this happened again in 2016. So the Goods and Services Tax Act was passed on March 29, 2017 and officially came into effect on July 1st, 2017. So now what is the Goods and Services Tax? It is simply a tax that is levied on the supply of goods and services wherein the GST regime subsumed a lot of the state levied taxes such as the VAT sales tax, octroi entry tax together and also subsumed central, centrally levied taxes such as the central excise and service tax and made one tax for one nation. So this GST as I said it's a dual GST with center and the states simultaneously levying tax on a common base which is mutually agreed. Now the GST to be levied by the center is called the central GST while the GST levied by the states is called the state GST. Now, in addition uh, to this, there is also the imported goods or services here. Now, one, there is customs duties which will be applicable and also there will be an integrated goods and services tax. And this is done because, you know, imported goods and services is treated as interstate supplies. Now, uh, in this GST, the consumer pays an overall rate under one of the major tax labs that is of 5%, uh, 12%, 18%. 28% and of course there is also a 0% where you know core goods will not attract any uh, tax and out of this tax that the consumer pays half accrues to the center or half goes to the center and the remaining half to the state where the consumption happens. Now in addition to this tax there is also a compensation cess ranging from 1 to 200% which is levied on sin and luxury goods like cigarettes. Uh, pan masala, certain categories of automobiles, which means the top end, uh, you know, vehicles over and above the topmost slab of 20th person. Now, this idea of compensation says means to compensate the states that have uh, suffered from revenue shortfall. Okay. And finally, there is also a GST council that we need to look at. Now, Article 279A of the Act states that a GST council is to be formed by who? The president to administer and govern the GST. The GST council will have a chairman and it is by default the union finance minister who will be the chairman and the members will be ministers nominated by the state governments. And usually the ministers are finance ministers only or the state finance ministers. Now the council is devised in such a way that the center will have one third voting power and the states have two third voting power and the decisions or the final call is taken by three fourth majority. So with this, we are concluding the key concepts also that we have to learn from the editorial. And now let us look at this from the uh, UPSC prelims and mains perspective. Now, uh, from prelims perspective, you know, GST is a subject that questions can come and it has also come. Uh, there is related to tax labs. There is also related to the Amendment Act. Uh, for mains examination, again, you know, GST has been a favorite topic of UPSC. Now, let us look at one. In 2019, this had come, you know, enumerate the indirect taxes which have been subsumed in the goods and services tax in India and also comment on the revenue implications of the GST introduced in India since July 2017. Another question that came was discuss the rationale for introducing the goods and service tax in India and bring out critically the reasons for the delay in rollout for its regime technically talking about the uh, timeline now dear viewers from our end we would like you to attempt this question uh, gst reforms should not fall victim to the compensation standoff between the center and states discuss so uh, please please feel free to give your answers in the comments below so that we can discuss this ahead 
So dear viewers, with this we come to the conclusion of today's session of editorial analysis. Hope we have thoroughly tried to, you know, uh, do justice to the editorial and able to explain it in a much better way to you. Uh, please feel free to give us your valuable suggestions and opinions so that we can always strive to do much better each and every day. So until next time, stay safe. Thank you and good night.